Well, hello, friendly people. I'm happy to talk with you again. Uh, I'm out here in one of the gardens that needs a lot of work. And of course, my talking is going to upset the dog, so it's going to be barking. You'll probably hear chickens and whatnot. But um, I'm all mic'd up, so what? Anyway, I've had some discussions with friends on, and acquaintances on the internet. Uh, I'm still going down this black box thing, which is to say that most of us don't know the difference between kerosene and gasoline and, and uh, jet fan engines and all of these things that we take for granted. We don't, we don't realize that people were still using mules and horses um, as animate movers. Uh, back in the 1950s and that places around the world still used horses and mules and oxen to as animate movers as opposed to inanimate movers and in the future we're probably going to have inanimate doctors and inanimate lawyers and inanimate um, uh, accountants <clears throat> and as part of this web 3 thing we're probably going to be trading our our uh, assets with algorithms <laughs> and we're going to be doing business via smart contracts and uh, trading, you know, buying things with cryptocurrencies and so on. And although it does take a long time for these transitions to happen, if you look back historically, it seems like they happen overnight, but a lot of things are happening for a long time before there's a phase transition or some kind of uh, new big technology like the internal combustion engine as opposed to just coal-powered you know steam engines that come along and really really shift things a lot so we might think that oh gosh the smartphone you know where did that was that a miracle did somebody just come down and you know god just said let there be smartphones and then suddenly everyone owned one <laughs> It's not quite that fast, but sometimes it seems like that. And sometimes when I'm thinking about Web3, I'm thinking, oh man, this is awfully fast. And there's only like 0.0002567 people in the whole wide world who understand it. But somehow they're able to do incredible things with it. And they might be poised to take over this, that, or the other thing. And I don't know anything about it. So where does that leave me and mine and all the young people in the world who may not be as curious as you are? And <laughs> it just sets my mind off, you know, uh, on a tizzy. And so I, I'm, I'm concerned about it like everything else. Also, from a solution standpoint, is there any way we can nudge or change or even have a, a no, non, not bloody revolution to shift our, our uh, socioeconomic systems, political systems, legal systems, and so on, uh, progress them in a better way? And I don't mean globally like George Soros is running a big global government or, you know, pick your billionaire, uh, the Koch brothers or whatever other, um, you know, hedge fund trader you want to talk about. And yeah, hedge fund traders, they're, they're ideological too. So you can find your lefty hedge fund traders or leftish and your rightish hedge fund traders, but basically they know how to play the finance game and the trading game and they make lots and lots of money, but it doesn't trickle down to the rest of us. So we might need to, to tweak things a bit and maybe blockchain and DAOs and some of these new concepts are going to help us or could help us. Like I'd like to make a Santa Catarina into a global media village where people can come and produce content here uh, about good things and also have farms and raise families and, and small businesses and so on. And uh, because, you know, we're going to have to figure out a way to bring people to the countryside in a sustainable way and also to re-engineer cities so that they can be sustainable. What do I mean about sustainable? Well, go on Google and do your own research. But I think you understand, right? Something that just is, is not going to tax the ecosystem so badly that it kills us all. 
you know, extinction is the rule, not the exception. And I'd rather the human race, Homo sapiens, not go extinct, because I think we're a, an interesting species. I am one. And it would be nice to see our children's children's children running around the universe in starships, but not Elon Musk bullshit starships, real ones, you know, that actually work and can get you from here to there, light years and light years away. So yeah, this Web3 thing is a big black box for me. Um, and I'd like to explore it for practical reasons and personal reasons. And also, I just, you know, if Congress people in the states and senators don't know shit, you know, and they sure act like they don't, they may, they may be lawyers, they may be professional politicians, you know, they may know how to raise money and keep their jobs and, and take money from special interests and corporations to keep their jobs. But a lot of them just seem so brain dead and the quality of politicians seems to be going down and down and down these days. So do you want them in charge of whatever the next, next, next thing is, you know, making a quip about the old Netscape browser? Um, do you want uh, dweebs like uh, Mark Zuckerberg in charge or con men like Elon Musk in charge, you know, pump and dump masters? Uh, masters of the game, the con game, not necessarily the great game where you have young husband running around Afghanistan trying to figure out what the Ruskies and the Chinese are doing up there. You know, those days were different. And today we're just sitting on a whole bunch of black boxes, black boxes all the way down. We don't know how anything works, but we think we do because we read it on a blog somewhere, or heard it on the news or something, or from a shock jock or, or uh, Jay Rogan or uh, some other clever fellow. Our favorite intellectual influencers who are so expressive and articulate and adamant about their their uh, understanding of things. I talked about becoming a reader. It's really important. But the other thing I want to do on this channel is to try to build community, find some like-minded people in the world and in the community here, and, uh, you know, discuss these things, come up with some fun projects, have a nice relationship where we learn something from each other, and uh, enjoy life. You know, so we have this communication. We have these tools that allow us to communicate like this uh, long distance through Zoom and Skype and other VOIP uh, applications and platforms through the Internet and so on. We can put it to good use and we can kind of nature nurture the thing. Anyway, there goes the light. So uh, I'm going to stop here. But I just wanted to say that I, I have some new uh, subscribers, uh, Mick, very nice guy, Progressive Pipes, who has uh, been kind enough to communicate with me, which I hope more people would do, because I'm, I'm an open book. I'm willing to talk about anything, and I may not be your cup of tea, might ru rub people the wrong way. I'm not that ideological. I'm not uh, totally wedded to any particular thing. But if somebody wants to talk about neo-Marxism or something, I want to know what they mean by it. Or um, neoliberalism, for example. What do you mean by it? Or is the term just bogus? You know, and why do you think it is? But outside the political realm as well, whatever your area of expertise is, whatever you know well, gosh, I'd love to talk to you about it and learn from you. So if you have any channels you want to share or any thoughts, ideas, or feelings, feel free to try to contact me. And I'm dead serious about trying to come up with a structure that could revitalize my little piece of Portugal here. Uh, it's none of my business. I'm not Portuguese, but I live here and I love the place and I think it has potential. So that's it for now. Thank you for watching. Please click like and subscribe if you wish to. Feel free to comment if you're too narrow-minded or mean. I'm not going to reply, but I usually do. And um, I hope to see you here again. Bouliam T. Out.